you know, what is it about positive thinking that makes you 29% smarter, uh, according to the FBI? You know, what are the ingredients of being enthusiastic? How come enthusiasm can overcome fear? You know, we talk about cold calling and we talk about some of those fears. And part of my everyday as a commercial real estate broker still is at age 59, 30 years doing this, is to pick up the phone and speak to people I don't know who recently bought or sold the property and to discuss with them strategies for what's next for them. You're listening to Carrie Lutz's Financial Survival Network, where you get valuable information you just can't find anywhere else. To thrive in today's trying times, you need the Financial Survival Network, now more than ever. Go to FinancialSurvivalNetwork.com and get your free newsletter and gift. Financial Survival Network, now more than ever. And welcome. You are listening to and watching the Financial Survival Network. I'm your host, Kerry Lutz. Well, you know we love real estate on this show. Some of my best friends uh, are in real estate. Uh, hopefully they'll be in there for a while, but who knows with what's going on today, interest rates and uh, rising inventories in certain parts of the country like Florida, um, empty office buildings because people no longer go to the office, or if they do, they do hybrid three days or two days at the office, two, three days at home. So what do we need these buildings for? Well, let's hear from a New York power broker, Ron Konigsberg. In fact, Ron, you have written a book, Power Broker, How to Succeed in Life and Business. Why do I have a feeling that the book is about more than just uh, being a realtor? That's correct, Carrie. That's correct. Thanks for having me so much on your show. I've listened to a lot of episodes, and it's a pleasure to be here. Um, and I just have written Power Broker, How to Be Successful in Business and Life. I think it's uh, for anyone listening. Um, I'm a career salesperson. I'm a career uh, commercial real estate broker. And while I definitely want to talk to you about commercial real estate, yeah. and more importantly, I want to talk to you about the, you know, the skills of communication and the ability mm-hmm. to be successful. And while only one in nine of us uh, identify as a career salesperson, I can promise you the other eight of us, 100% of us are in sales and some regard um, every single day of our lives. I couldn't agree with you more. I've been doing sales since uh, my late teens. I was once upon a time selling uh, newspaper subscriptions for the Star Ledger uh, in uh, New Jersey. And uh, really, I wouldn't say they had a good training program by any stretch. It was kind of lousy, honestly. But, uh, hey, you knew that uh, 90% of the people were going to hang up the phone on you. Nowadays, though, you can't even reach those people to get them to hang up the phone. I mean, right. hey, it's like you welcome. You look, you look back to the days when people actually hung up the phone on you with uh, with nostalgia. Here, you know, absolutely. What if I told you that there is the statistic that eighty five percent of all American business leaders and millionaires and entrepreneurs, eighty five percent started. In sales. Wow. That's I believe it. Well, every business, you're always selling something. You know, your greatest product or your worst product, depending uh, from your perspective, is you. You're always right. selling yourself here, Ron, right? You're the solution. You're the answer to whatever it is they need. Well, start there. And that's correct. And I believe that the skills that we talk about in Power Broker how to be successful in business and life are the skills that help people uh, amass so much money uh, so that, you know, they can invest money into the financial uh, survival network, things that you talk about, gold and silver and stock. Mm -hmm. All right. So what's the key here? What's the secret? How do you break the code, the millionaire's code, become a millionaire, multimillionaire? There must be a way, right? Of course. Of course. Of course. And, I think the book that that really resonates with me in 2005, T. Harv Eckert wrote a book specifically about the quality that the, the eight skills, and I've written nine skills that make up the millionaire mind. And, you know, his skills are outlined in, in my book, 
But the first thing I want to talk about is active listening. Um, mm -hmm. Well, you know, and, and that's the reason why I wrote this book. While I was a successful salesman and I've been a, um, a million dollar producer for many years, and I do, I have been the commercial real estate broker of the year here on Long Island. It really wasn't until about 10 years ago that my brother, who's an attorney, said to me, I want to change your entire world. I want to teach you how to be an active listener. It's a skill set that I need you to work on. Mm -hmm. uh, an exclusive listener. And I said, wait a minute, you don't have to, you don't have to listen in their ear. They're attached to your head. And he said, no, put away your distractions. I want you to practice listening. I want you to repeat back to me what I'm telling you. And I started to do that for 30 days. And my sales really went um, up percentage-wise. And then I started to think about, you know, what is it? What are the tools that uh, the sales person has for getting 5% of those successful people? You know, what is it about positive thinking that makes you 29% smarter, uh, according to the FBI? You know, what are the ingredients of being enthusiastic? How come enthusiasm can overcome fear? You know, we talk about cold calling and we talk about some of those fears. And part of my everyday as a commercial real estate broker still is, at age 59, 30 years doing this, is to pick up the phone and speak to people I don't know who recently bought or sold the property and to discuss with them strategies for what's next for them in commercial real estate. Mm -hmm. So overcoming fear, fear of failure, fear of success, very important, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Fear of failure is uh, something that I think that I, I, I think our parents, our grandparents, they loved us and they try to do the very best. But in many ways, they implanted in us these fears that they had, the fear of failure, the fear of success. Uh, very much, mm -hmm. you, know, you know, the fear of uh, success. If we really want to talk about fear, I did one of the most amazing fears that I came across while writing this book, second to none, honestly, is glossophobia. What is it? Glossophobia. Oh. Harry, it's amazing. It's the fear of public speaking. Okay. Now, public speaking to me is a leadership skill because... If you can speak in front of a group and you can speak well and you can speak in front of an audience and you can speak in front of a one-on-one -on -one audience and be able to speak well, then it lends to success. But let's talk about glossophobia. It's the fear of being ridiculed or exiled. Now, we all need each other. It's the fear of public speaking which has been in people, according to the scientists of glossophobia, for thousands of years. And the fear is, is that you're going to say something, and it's going to be so silly and so embarrassing that you're going to be ridiculed and exiled from your group. Um, that's hard science into us. Now, I don't know anybody that's been ridiculed or exiled. However, I do know a lot of people, including myself, that have suffered from the fear of public speaking. And it's a practice mechanism. You know, the more you practice it, the easier it is to overcome that fear. But it's practice. And there is a fear of public speaking. And it is hardwired. You know, it's so funny. I've never had that fear. Um, I just was born to talk in front of groups. I love now I will admit when I first started the podcast, I had a fear of exactly what you're saying is saying something stupid, but then it occurred to me while I'm recording the podcast. So if I don't look good, I can always uh, edit it out. But, um, you know, but I've certainly known my share of people who've, uh, who've had that fear. I mean, I even uh, went up and I started doing stand up comedy recently. Wow. You are fearless. Yeah. If I was fearless, Carrie, I would do stand up comedy. Hey. I would love to try this. I'm scared. It, yeah, but there's like, the first time I got up, I was a little nervous the first couple of times. But when people start laughing at your stuff, uh, it gives you confidence. And I love that. You know, the old saying, you got to fake it till you make it. You got to yeah. project confidence, even if you don't feel it. 
right? And that is key to sales is confidence. It's key to anything. And you know, key to dating success is confidence because nobody wants to be with somebody who's a loser. You know, they only want to be with winners. Tell me more about the public. I mean, tell me more about the uh, comedy. Did you enjoy it? I loved it. I still am doing it. And I know I'm good enough that I could actually go get paid for it. But it's like, I don't want to be a headliner. I'm going to do corporate events. And uh, I call myself uh, America's top recovering attorney. Oh, so. I didn't realize that uh, I didn't realize you left <laughs> so. the world of law. Um, hey, I the world's a right. stage, right? Shakespeare said the world's a stage world, and we're all just actors upon it. Everybody's an actor upon it. Yeah. I would love to try public speaking. Um, so really, I think, you know, I think what interests me is watching. I have two sons. Uh, well, I'm 59. I, have, I had a, 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 a 10 and an 11 year old. And I think I'm blown away uh, about the amount of text messages. How many text messages do you think you send a day? Too many. Uh, I mainly spend my time uh, deleting text messages from people I don't want to hear from, but they okay. have a political bent, but they send me 50 of them a day. But, you know, uh, I just get like these text chains. My kids do it. I've got right. three kids. And it's like I've muted all the notifications. So it just, they just go. accumulate. And then the I look and say, American send yeah. 52 texts per day. Send. Really? 52 texts per day. However, that significantly changes once you appear the the uh, the age 25. Right. It goes to 128 text messages. Oh, it gets worse with age? Um, right. We do less. We actually, I think it's better. I think it's inverted. I think that we're better at communicating. I think that the skill sets are getting worse. You know, 120, 78% of Americans say that they would rather um, wish that they could text a company rather than pick up the phone and get information about that. I feel that way, too, because texting is what you call asynchronous communications, meaning you don't need to be looking at me, me looking at you, or on the phone. You know, I can just send you something that I want to know. And I don't have to, um, you know, wait around for you to come up with an answer. So it's more efficient, but we've, it is. we're it way is. past that, though, with the use. Well, right. So it's becoming a problem. I'm just wondering, in that not having to, you know, be forward facing um, is a statistic that blows me away. 76% of Gen Z, which is 14 to 34 year olds, I think. Yeah, sure. Gen Z uh, report tremendous phone anxiety. Should they have to speak to somebody? <sighs> oh, that's funny. Wow. wow, that you know. So I think that my book and my message and my um, and and my skill set is focused on really those eighty five percent of the current entrepreneurs and business leaders that have been able to learn how to sell. And I think it's really understanding communication and, and the formula behind communication. And mm-hmm. uh, I don't know if you know the FBI study 55387. Um, basically, communication is broken down into 55% body language and facial expression, 55%. 38% through tonality, how you say something, mm-hmm. it's only 7%. The word. Yeah, well, so, me and my ex-wife have had that beat because one hundred percent of our uh, communication was nonverbal. We just like stop talking to each other altogether. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I am in the same boat. I have an ex-wife. Unfortunately, I'm able to speak to her because of those two, uh, um, because of those two children. Uh, because of those two children, it's uh, mm-hmm. important to me and. I think I've learned a lot by writing that book. It brings me to something that, you know, that's something that's really hard for me. And that's the ex-wife. And I, I um, it's argument. I have yeah. taken anger out of my argument. I really, right. that's not true. I tried. So 
I've tried. So uh, getting back to uh, the important things here, the fears, the things that keep you from success, besides speaking in front of a group, which is really mandatory, and uh, taught my kids how to do it from a long time before. Um, what else have we got? What other fears? Well, public speaking is one. It's communication, the, the, the Gen X fear of being on the phone. I think it's understanding them and challenging yourself and understanding that life is um, living outside the comfort zone and that you need to transfer your, you know, but also learning these sales skills, as you said a little bit earlier, they're transferable. So if you can sell and you can speak to people, those same skills, I think you said, are usable on a date with, um, um, yeah. you know? Hey, so another thing that I use to overcome the, my remaining fears, I know that started this seven years ago. We've only got a couple of years between us age-wise learning how to dance. Because if you want to learn how to dance, uh, you have to, you absolutely have to learn how to not care what anybody thinks looking at you. You have to lose all your you. self-confidence. Good for you. Good for you. And it works. I recommend that. Do you the can dance and what kind of dance and, uh, you okay. were learning? Uh, Basically, ballroom dance. Whoa. <laughs> and uh, ballroom, you know, different Latin dances and such. And it really... I tell you, even... I'm awful. I, I mean, I don't even know I could get to put myself out there like that. It's just something I'm just so powerfully awful at. <laughs> you would be surprised. Ever. Oh, you'd be surprised. <laughs> Have you ever seen a lane on Seinfeld? Uh, yeah, well, I have friends that dance like that, and I make yeah, right. fun of them. But uh, but everybody can learn to dance. The key is not to learn how to do a particular dance or whatever, but just to learn to learn how to enjoy whatever it is you're doing is really the key. And that's how I feel about sales, and that's how I feel about you know speaking to my uh, son and speaking to anyone. Uh, number one is to impress upon them the importance of being able to public speak, communicate, negotiate, relationship build, understand resilience and how important resilience is uh, in business. I was one, I was recently, you know, I did write a book and, and I was asked what's the most important skill for success in business. And I believe it to be, you know, obviously these skills, but one of the skills that I've included in my nine skills is resilient. You will be tested. You will have challenges to reach your goal. And salesmen, there will be a lot of resistance. And I need people to understand resilience is important, not only in sales and business and all of all parts of life. All right. Well, I think uh, we covered a lot here. I think if you want to find out more, then you. just going to have to go and get the book. Uh, it's at Amazon. Or wherever fine books used to be sold. Uh, the name of the book is Power Broker, How to Succeed in Life and Business. And there's a special Kindle deal there. And uh, hey, the author, of course, is Ron Konigsberg. Ron, been a pleasure having you. Just okay, tell Thanks so much. Where do we find you? How do we connect with you on the web? Absolutely. Uh, www.ronkonigsberg.com. I have a landing page. Uh, we have uh, some Kajabi uh, video there uh, to learn. But yeah, definitely, uh, rockconingsburg.com. All right, links in the show notes to this interview on our site, financialsurvivalnetwork.com. And while you're there, please sign up for your free newsletter. Rock, been a pleasure. Thanks so much for stopping by. Thanks so much, Kerry. Thanks for having me. Wow. Thank you. Thanks for listening to Kerry Lutz's Financial Survival Network, your solution to today's trying times. For the latest, go to FinancialSurvivalNetwork.com. Financial Survival Network, now more than ever.